Welcome to the Linux Academy. In today's nugget, we're gonna be talking about Red Hat Enterprise Linux version seven on using a local install DVD to set up for our Yum repo. Now, this is a really good resource to understand and know how to use for a couple of different reasons. And primarily being usually on RHEL 7, obviously before you can even use Yum to install any basic applications, you have to have a Red Hat management subscription, meaning you have to have a license that you've purchased with Red Hat. Now, you may already have a license, but you want to install a Red Hat Enterprise 7 workstation or server just to do testing on. Perhaps you're actually studying for your Red Hat Enterprise Linux base certifications, and you don't want to have to go out and buy multiple license in order to do this, or even manage and move your license keys around. This is a great way to install basic packages, to at least be able to use Red Hat Enterprise Linux servers and install basic packages without having to basically have a license. I do wanna note before we actually jump into this, this is not best practice and is most certainly not recommended by Red Hat because you're not gonna be using the latest updates on your Red Hat Enterprise Linux system. That includes the applications that we're gonna install locally off of the DVD install source. But again, this is just for learning Red Hat and we're not gonna be using this in a production environment. So let's jump right in. Today I'm gonna be using VirtualBox to install Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 and you can follow along with me if you so wish. So the first thing I want to do is actually go up here and click my new button and I'm gonna create a new virtual machine and we're just gonna simply call this RHEL 7. We're just gonna call it Nugget for today. And I'm gonna hit continue. Gonna go ahead and leave about a gig of virtual RAM. Create all the defaults for my hard drive, keeping VDI as my disk image type. Looks good. All right, so the first thing that I need to do is actually mount my install DVD. As you can see, I have my RHEL 7 7.0 ISO disk just here on my desktop. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go down here to storage and select my DVD option. And we are going to actually browse to my desktop and I'm gonna choose my RHEL 7 ISO install DVD. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. I'm just gonna simply go ahead and double click. As you can see, I have a lot of virtual machines here. Don't worry about that. What I'm interested in is the one that I've just created called RHEL 7 Nugget. So I'm gonna double click it and that is going to start up my virtual machine. And if you've never installed Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 before from the ISO, the very first thing that it asks us gives us a couple of different options. First of which is install Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, which is all that we're interested in today. So I'm gonna select that and hit enter. And we're gonna go ahead and let this virtual machine boot up into the DVD for its first time. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do and the first thing that we're actually presented with is choosing our language. So I'm gonna go ahead and obviously choose English. And there are a couple of things that we need to do off the bat. I am going to do a minimal install because we don't want to install any of the other applications yet. I'm just gonna do a minimal install. My installation destination, just need to make sure that my hard disk drive is selected and it does have a check mark. As soon as I hit done, it will actually say that it is now ready to proceed. I'm not even gonna change the network and or host name, but we can certainly do that at this time as well as change our date and time or keyboard if we wanted to. I'm gonna go ahead and click begin installation. And while the base packages are installing, I'm gonna go ahead and set my root password. Click done. And I'm gonna go ahead and create our first user for our Linux machine. I'm gonna go ahead and make him administrator, which basically puts me in the pseudo wheel group. And I'm gonna set my password for him. And then once again, click done. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video while it's installing those packages. And we'll go ahead and pick right back up when that's complete. Okay, so once our packages are done complete, it, go, it will go ahead and tell us here at the bottom, and we can go ahead and click reboot.
All right, so we are now presented with our brand new fresh base Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 server. I'm gonna go ahead and log into mine as my root user that we set up during installation. So as you may know, yum is the package management tool that basically helps us install both updates and packages through our network and out to the internet. In order to do that with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, we have to have a RHEL subscription. So again, what we're going to do is actually change the configuration files that are under our Etsy directory and our Etsy yum configuration file that contains our global options, such as our cache directory or log directory and et cetera. So, we need to add a new or update our existing repository. So the Etsy repos.d directory is the directory that actually holds these different repository locations. All right, so what I'm gonna first do is actually change directories out to our root of our file system. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new directory. We're simply gonna call it CD-ROM. And if we list here, we now have a CD-ROM folder. And what I'm gonna simply do is mount our DVD-ROM. But since I'm using VirtualBox, after a fresh install, the DVD of our install ISO is no longer mounted to our virtual machine. So the first thing I need to do, you'll notice there's an icon in VirtualBox down here, and I can actually choose CD or DVD disk file, which is simply our ISO. So again, on my desktop, I'm choosing my RHEL server ISO, and it is now attached to our virtual machine from our desktop. So now we can progress with our mount command and we're gonna mount dev forward slash CD-ROM. We're gonna mount that to the new directory that we just created simply called CD-ROM. All right, so it's now mounted as read only as we expected. And there's now a new repo file that we wanna create under our Etsy repos.d directory. But before we do that, I'm actually gonna go ahead and head to our Etsy yum.repos.d directory, and we're gonna go ahead and take a look. Sure enough, there are none there. We are going to create a brand new file here. So we're gonna go ahead and create our file. So I'm gonna use the vi text editor command, and the name of the file that we wanna create is simply local.repo. So the first thing we wanna do is in brackets here, we wanna create the name of our actual repo. This is just the name section of our repo config file. So I'm gonna type local repo and end our bracket. The next thing is the actual name of the repository. So if I do name equals, so we're gonna go ahead and name it local repository. Then we're gonna create our base URL. The base URL is basically the location of the package that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna type base URL equals file because we're going to be accessing local. So I'm gonna put three slashes here and I'm gonna type CD-ROM because it's gonna be in our root directory of CD-ROM. I'm going to enable this. So an enabled equals one simply means that we're enabling this repository then I'm gonna do the GPG check. This enables secure installation. So I'm gonna type GPG check equals one. All right, and then we actually need to select the location of our GPG key. So we simply type GPG key equals, it's also gonna be a file location, so file colon three slashes, and we're gonna to go to the root of our Etsy directory, forward slash PKI, forward slash RPM, dash GPG, forward slash. So there may be multiple repository files within our yum.repos.d directory if you're actually using a RHEL 7 server that has already been set up. However, this is a brand new, fresh, vanilla setup of RHEL 7, so we don't have anything in that directory. If you do have something in your existing RHEL 7 server, you need to remove all the repo files, except for the new file that we just created called local.repo. Now, in this PKI RPM-GPG key, there is a specific file that we want to find. If we don't know the name of it and we wanna grab it real quick, let's go ahead and back out of this file and save it. And what I'm gonna do is actually take a look at the location of our GPG key files. So again, let's go ahead and move out to Etsy, PKI, 
And under the PKI folder, there's an RPM-GPG folder that actually has several different keys already. So once we've changed to that location, let's take a look at them. So we have a different couple of options of keys that we could possibly use. We could use the Red Hat Beta. We could use the Legacy or Former. We could use the Legacy Release. But what we want to use is the RPM GPG key Red Hat dash release, which simply means that is the release of date as of the version when the ISO was actually released. So what I'm gonna do is go to VI Etsy yum dot repose dot D and we're gonna take a look at our file that we started creating here. And now that we know which one that we wanna do, we can end this location. It's in the RPM-GPG folder. And the actual name of the key that we want is RPM-GPG-Key-Red Hat-Release. All right, so that's all we need in our file. So we can go ahead and save it and then quit. Now, before we install anything using this new local repository, we need to clear the repository cache by entering the yum clean all command. So I'm gonna type yum clean all. And now we can actually use yum using our local repository to install an application. So we know that on a base Red Hat 7 system, VIM is not installed. So I want the VIM text editor, so I'm gonna simply do yum install VIM. So let's take a look here as we install this package, what it does. All right, it found that there is a package. You'll notice up here that it says local repo. So we know that it is finding this package on our local repo, which happens to be our DVD. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes. It's telling us where it's getting it. All right, once again, we notice that this is getting it from our CD-ROM under packages. I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes. Yes again and it's gonna download and install those packages from our local DVD drive. So sure enough, it's complete. We can now use the VIM text editor. So that's how easy it is to use a local DVD ROM to actually set up a local repository and use our Red Hat Enterprise Linux system without having to set up a Red Hat Enterprise license. Hope you enjoyed this nugget. This is Steven with Linux Academy. Until next time, have a great one.